Power Hour. Another thing I'd rather be good with three Super Bowl rings than great with one than none. Hmm. It's an interesting take. So you wouldn't want to be. So if Reggie White hadn't won the Super Bowl with Green Bay, you'd rather be Brandon Graham than Reggie White. Is that right, Tone? You'd rather be Brandy Graham than Reggie White. If Reggie hadn't won that Super Bowl in Green Bay, you'd rather be Brandy Graham? I don't know about that. <laughs> the expectations are different based on your position. I'm talking cool. <laughs> okay. All right. It's true. You can be considered one of the greatest defensive players in the history of the sport, not having won a ring and no one holds that really against you. But when you're a quarterback or coach and you don't have that Super Bowl ring, those two people in the NFL, it matters, doesn't it? Quarterbacks and coaches, because they're synonymous with one another. It's true. I, I don't I don't look at some of the greatest, like Dick Butkus. We look at Dick Butkus as the greatest or one of the top three middle linebackers in the history of the sport, and no one takes that away from him. And actually, if you think about it, people revere Butkus more than they did Nitsky. And Nitsky won five titles in nine years with Lombardi. But no one makes the, makes the conversation and goes like this, well, Nitsky's better. He's not. And for the record, Nitsky was a hell of a Hall of Famer himself. But Buckus, I don't think Buckus ever played in the postseason in his entire professional career. Can you imagine that? You drafted Gale Sayers and Dick Buckus in the same draft, and you never made the postseason. Ever. So you had, in 1965, I think it was, they were both drafted in the same draft, Dick Buckus and Gale Sayers, and they never played in the postseason. Two players that you could make an argument. Man, I'll tell you what. Gail Sayers was, he was Barry Sanders before Barry Sanders. And Butkus was Ray Lewis before Ray Lewis. And he was the most intimidating linebacker in the history of the sport. But to Tone's point, hey, we don't, we don't hold that level of excellence against him. But if you're a quarterback or coach, okay, Jim Brown, I think Jim Brown made a couple playoffs, Steve, but I don't believe that he, I believe they won that title. I don't know if he was on that 64 title. He may have been on that 64 title team. The Browns won a title, I believe, in 64, maybe 63. And I think that was either one of the first or second years that he was in Cleveland when he came out of Syracuse. So he may have been on that team. That's 63 years. I, I think it was either 63 or 64 that the Browns won the NFL championship. And remember, the NFL Super Bowl didn't happen until the 66 season. So that was pre-Super Bowl era. Okay, he was. He was on the 64 team. Okay, so he was on that 64 NFL championship team. And if I'm not mistaken, he may have even played against um, uh, my relative, Robostelli, and it could have been the 64 team could have played against the Giants because it wasn't the Packers. Because the Packers, um, one of the great comments after the Eagles beat them in the title game in 60, Lombardi said that we'll never lose another game like this as far as I'm concerned, ever. And they didn't. He went 5-1 and one after that. He never lost another championship game as a – as a head coach in Green Bay. <laughs> he, I mean, he goes, we will never lose a game like that ever again. And they never did. Five titles in nine years and the first two Super Bowls and back-to-back -back and three champion. He's the last team to do three championships in a row. So, God, I'm glad. 26 teams report to training camp today. 
26 teams, so many expectations. Let me let me throw a couple more NFL questions at you here. I got two. We'll reset. We'll reset the um, Eagle Camp going into training camp here. Does Deshaun Watson rebound? They're saying all the right things. They're saying all the right things in Cleveland. God, he looks good. He's in a good place. He's in a good space. I don't know what that means, but he's in a good space. I think he does. I think he's a good player. Don't be shocked in the AFC if Cleveland elbows their way into the top five and puts himself in a position to potentially contend for something good. They got a lot of talent. They got a running game. They got a good defense. They got pass rushers. They got corners. They got receivers. That's a good football team. They need Deshaun Watson to play well. Okay? They need him to play well. And if he plays well, I think Cleveland's going to be right there. Here's another NFL question going into camp. Seattle goes into camp today as well. Does Geno Smith repeat what he did in 2022? I don't see it. I don't believe it. He's never done it in his career. Why would I believe he's going to do it again? It's the greatest season he's ever had in his 12 years. Now, is it better coaching? I do believe that. Is it a better environment? I do believe that. Is it a better organization? I do believe that. All those things I think have led to Geno Smith having a better peace of mind. I think peace of mind is a big deal. Okay, I do. I don't think he's going to – I know a lot of – I know Tone is in that room with me too. I don't think he's going to duplicate what he did a year ago, leading the NFL in completion percentage and throwing for all those touchdowns and yards. But I don't think he's going to fall off that much. I think Seattle – I'm going to get to the teams that I think keep an eye on, especially in the NFC. I don't think Geno – I don't think he's going to – how about this? I think he falls off, but I don't think he falls off a ton. And it would not shock me if they win the NFC West and shock people and win the West. Are they as good as San Francisco? No. But Dallas isn't as good as Philadelphia. But they could win it too. So, no, I don't. And I just mentioned this. Here are the teams in the NFC that I've circled going into camp that I think could give the Eagles some problems this year in the NFC. And I know you guys got them head and heels above everyone else. I don't. Because repeating and playing against great teams. Here, playing against great teams every week, you're going to have to have max effort, which leads to injury. There will be significant injuries on the Eagles this year. Will they be able to overcome the injuries that they didn't get a year ago? It is coming this year. You're just playing against better people. Okay, you weren't playing against dominant teams last year. You are now. That'll be a different. See back. See last year, and I know some of you may not agree with my take here. Well, you didn't have to play sixty minutes of football in probably fourteen games a year ago. You didn't have to play sixty minutes. I think you're going to have to play sixty minutes in fourteen games this year. You're going to have to have max effort. And playing like that each and every single week against better opponents, better coach people, starting right out of the gate. Get this. Some of you think you're going to kill the Patriots. Okay. Still, that's not playing the Texans. They will be better coached. They will be better prepared. I'm not saying you're not better. I'm saying that's just a, that's a lesser team that you have to play probably 55 minutes of football against 
And then when you play Buffalo and Kansas City, that's going to come down to the last drive. You were able to have your quarterback banged up, not play well in the playoffs, and get through the play. Get this. I've never seen where a team could limp into the playoffs, win home field advantage, the guy not play well in the divisional game or the NFC title game because they're so far ahead of everyone else. Usually these – like in the AFC – Dude, you lose Joe Burrow or you got Joe Burrow banged up going into the AFC title game, he ain't winning that game in the AFC. That's not happening. That's not happening. And and get this, the gauntlet of quarterbacks you got to play against. You got to play against Allen, Lawrence, Mahomes, Burrow, Jackson. You're not playing that gauntlet in the NFC. You're playing all overachieving quarterbacks. Shit, what first-round quarterback do you think you're going to play in the postseason this coming season if you're Philly? Who? Well, if you're thinking you're going to get home field, you're going to play against Purdy and maybe Dak. You ain't playing against first-round quarterbacks. Not playing against you're playing against overachievers. Not, the guy in Philly's not a first rounder. There's look, the Cowboys. They'll figure this thing out with Zach Martin. They got better. I think getting Stefan hey, Stefan Gilmore and Diggs, are they? I think Stefan Gilmore and Diggs, I think they're compatible with Slay and Bradbury. Because I don't think I'm with Mike Missanelli. I think Slay's on the back nine. I don't think he's that hot. He has a high opinion of himself. I don't think he finished the year good. I think it was a mistake to bring him back. But, hey, we'll see if I'm wrong on that one. That, that Hey, that's a prediction. Slay will, Slay will have a year like Ramsey did a year ago. I think that's a good way to look at this hour here. Let me take a look at that because I got expectations over here that we wrote down in the first hour here. Okay. It's so interesting. The NFC is filled with second and third and fourth round overachievers at quarterback. The AFC has all the first round talent. It's crazy too, to think that, but it, but it's a cycle. It, it goes like that in cycles. Sometimes, you know, back in the eighties, all the great teams were in the NFC. They weren't – can you imagine if that Eagle team had to play against the Broncos every year in the uh, AFC? They'd have been in the Super Bowl every year. A Bronco team, every time they got into the Super Bowl against either Washington, New York, whomever, right? The 49ers, they got killed. Dosa, Slay's not a top corner. Dude, you think that guy had a – Great Super Bowl? Do you think that guy really had a great second half of the season? Bradbury outplayed him. I do not think he's a top flight corner. I think Ramsey's better. I think Dallas actually has just as good of corners. Dude, Slay's never had the career, Stefan Gilmore. They're pretty much the same age. You're not under the impression that you think Stephon Gilmore is a lesser player than Darius Slay. How could you think that? Shit, three years ago, that guy was the NFL player. That guy was the NFL defensive player of the year. Stephon Gilmore. Slay's never, never approached that. Hey, by the way, I'm comparing him against a guy who could be a pro football Hall of Famer. Stephon Gilmore might make the pro football Hall of Fame. Don't kid yourself. Defensive player of the year, all decade? You're crazy if you're (laughs) underestimating how good that guy is. Okay? Jalen Hurts. I think Jalen, like Mike. I think he's around these numbers. 
I think he may dip below these numbers a little bit. But I think Jalen is going to win ball games. And I'm I don't watch this. You're going to see maybe not the same kind of consistency that you saw. You're definitely not going to because there's better teams. And let's not forget something. You know, as much as you guys think your team is so above this, you did lose to the Redskins. Okay? You did. Pretty convincingly. But I I don't think Jalen is anybody to worry about. Actually, I think he's going to – okay, I think Jalen Hurts is going to continue to improve, even though his numbers may not, against really good quality players. No one's going to look lesser at Jalen if he has lesser numbers. Dude, you play against Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen, and you're playing against Aaron Rodgers, and you're playing against some of these guys, I don't you – don't, you don't look down on that. AJ, do I think he has lesser year? No. Better not. Devontae? No, I could think he could team. How about this? This Jamison Williams guy that's in Detroit. So did you hear? I know that he's suspended because of gambling. But he's hurt already again. You know, he can go to training camp and he kind of got pulled out of practice. I'll tell you something about him. Maybe that's the guy that I got confused with Devontae because every time I see that guy, that guy's like paper mache. He's either hurt, there's a hamstring, something else. He gets banged up a lot. I don't know. I don't know if that guy's going to be able to get, maybe he's the guy. You go like this. I don't know if that guy's going to get through an NFL season. Because when I see him, I go like this. Man, okay, so the game is going to hold him back. Last year he couldn't play because of the injury he had when he was at Bama. Kid, you got to get on the field eventually, don't you? Talent can only carry you so far. Same thing with Judy as well. Waddle, Smith, we're all true studs at Bama. Dude, the most overrated word used in professional sports is potential. Potential means you haven't done it. So, well, he's got great potential. Well, okay, so nobody goes like this. Patrick Mahomes has great potential. Potential is a, a word you give to the people who haven't proven it. I don't like the word potential. And the only time you get the, to use the word potential is your first year. After that, you can't keep saying the guy has potential. Like you guys like to do with Penny. After five years, all we keep saying about Penny is potential. Aren't you tired of it? How many years are you going to use the word potential for a five-year veteran? Becomes kind of obnoxious after a while. Well, this guy's got great potential, Sills. Six yards of carry. Five years you've been using that. How about a great NFL player? Anytime I hear the word potential on a veteran, that means he's had an underachieving career. Is this true, um, Tone? Wealthy saying that John Lynch said that he does not expect Nick Boza to be with the team as training camp opens due to the ongoing contract negotiations. Boza will not be at practice. And I'll tell you something about Boza, the father, um, John Boza. Did the same thing to Joey Boza when Joey was negotiating with the Chargers. They held him out of the first four games. Okay, so Nick Boza. 
okay? Michael, Michael goes like this. Big Sills, your show has potential. I know, man. Hey, Michael, after 35 years of broadcasting, maybe one day I'll get there. <laughs> somebody, somebody told me that years ago, Michael. Hey, Sills, you know, your show sucks so bad. I go, I know. For the last 25 years, this thing has sucked. I, I, uh, I know, man. My show after 35 years has potential. Hey. So so look at boy, if you're Philadelphia, oh my God. No holdouts, no problems, no nothing. Holy shit. Is this lining up for Philly to get back to the NFC title game? Holy shit. Dallas has this. Good. And I wrote these teams down. So look at this. I mean, this is just today going to camp. So I said, I got the 49ers here. So now you got a quarterback. Here's what you got. And Niner. Here, here's what you got. You don't know who the quarterback is. Nick Boza now is not in camp. I believe that's a fine of $50,000 too, like Chris Jones. So you got the Niners with noise. Seahawks, any noise in Seattle? Keep an eye on Seattle. Any noise in Detroit? Yeah, that Gardner Johnson guy. Can't keep his mouth shut. That guy can't keep his mouth shut. And and plus there's a there's a lot of hype on that team. A lot of noise. That's a noisy team. Minnesota, cut Dalvin Cook. Dude, where are you getting 5,000 yards in the last four years to run the ball on all those touchdowns and five yards of carry? Where are you getting that? That's noise to me. The Saints. Hey, is Alvin Kamara in prison or is he not? Or is he playing? Does anyone have an update for me? I can't get anyone to tell me what's going on. Is Alvin is Alvin Kamara in the pokey? Is he in the pokey? Or is 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 he playing? Is he in camp? What's going on with him? I mean, Bose is getting traded, hopefully. Before camp? What if they trade him to the Cowboys? <laughs> trade him to the Cowboys. Or trade Boza to the Patriots. Can you see them trading Nick Boza to the Patriots or the Cowboys? Where would be a good landing spot for Nick Boza? You got to remember, you got to be able to give up assets. Let's see. Where would you trade Nick Bosa? 49ers, I'm not trading him to Dallas. I'm not trading him to anybody in the NFC. So that's out. Philly, we're not. Jacksonville? Wow. Have Bosa in the NFC chasing around all those. How about Baltimore? Trading him to Baltimore. Wow. Bose is not going to show up because he wants 30 million. I thought he had another year on his deal. The Texans, would the 49ers do that? They have a lot. Do they? Arizona? No. They can't trade him in the division. Arizona's got a lot of draft choices next year. Ton. But they would never trade him to Arizona. I don't think. Would you tra- would you trade Nick Boza to Arizona for Kyler Murray? Would you put Boza and Trey Lance in a package? For Kyler Murray.
JM, Cardinals have a ton of compensation picks. Murray can't play right now. I get it. He's entering the final year of his rookie deal. Wow. What a, how do you let that go on knowing that he's not going, he's due 17.8. Oh, he wants, but, and, and, and he get this. He wants a $13 million raise. You try not to trade him in the NFC. Where would you put Boza? Oh, my God, I got it. Would you trade Boza to Kansas City in exchange for Chris Jones? How about sending him to Kansas City? I think Bose is better than Chris Jones. And you send Jones, no, because they got two D tackles up there, Armstead and Javon Hardgrave. So that doesn't make sense. They both want huge contracts, though. And I don't see San Francisco playing. That's right. That's right, Tone. And, and Arm, no, you're right. You're not going to do that. The Bengals aren't going to do it. They got to pay Burrow. Would you trade Nick Boza to the Chargers so that he could play next to his brother or on the other side of his brother? Would you trade him to what? No, you wouldn't trade him to Washington. Because he's in the NFC. I see the here, – here's the teams. Would you send Boza to the Jets? And you got Quentin Williams, Sauce Gardner, and that other kid at corner. And Nick Boza on your defense? Shit. The Jets would be – Pittsburgh? On the other side of TJ, the Jets gave up King's ransom for Rodgers. Sure did. How about Carolina? Trading him back to get the picks that the 49ers sent to Carolina for McCaffrey. You get your pits, you get your picks back. And you have him and Burns on both sides and you're in a lesser division, the NFC South, to me, Carolina makes sense because Carolina got the King's ransom for Christian McCaffrey. Mm, they did lose picks trading up for Bryce Young. That's correct because the Bears had the number one pick. That's right. Trade him to Chicago? Chicago's got a shitload of money. They got a shitload of money, man, and a ton of cap space. That would make Chicago interesting. That would make Chicago pretty interesting if you put Boza up there. Okay? In Chicago. That makes them a little interesting. Boza in Chicago on that side of the ball, they got a ton of money. The Titans? Wow. Him and the kid Simmons. Wow. That'd be crazy. Would he make sense in Philly? Why would the 49ers now? Who could you send? Jordan Davis? You send Jordan Davis? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Tone. You said Jordan Davis. You said Jordan Davis, a first rounder and a third to San Fran for Boza. And you got Boza and Josh Sweat. 
Jalen Carter, Fletcher Cox, Milton Williams in a rotation, and that would be your defensive front. You got Reddick and Boza on both sides. You think they would want Hassan Reddick? I'd give Hassan Reddick up for Boza. You want Reddick? Sure. Boza, 25 years old, defensive player of the year. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll take the I'll, I'll take the 25 year old guy who's defensive player of the year. I'll t- if you you want well, if I'm gonna give Reddick up, you better give me somebody that's just as much of a havoc wreaker. So I think that makes sense, and he's younger. And he's the reigning defensive player of the year. But would the Eagles pay $30 million? Eh. <laughs> that, uh, no, that I do not believe. <laughs> so you could take that out of the bank. They're not spending that on a defensive end. No way. Would they? No way. What's the most money they've ever spent on a defensive player? <clears throat> What's the most money they've ever... Those corners have to be the corners in the uh, Reddick, right? They they refuse to pay... They wouldn't pay $20 million for Hardgrave. Well, I, I get that. There's no way the Eagles would spend $30 million on a four-year contract for a guy like Nick Boza, even though he is a great... Would be a great addition and somebody that you could have in your defense for the next decade. They're not doing that. I could see the Cowboys doing that. Trading one of – trade. hey, I don't think they'd trade Parsons, but they might trade the other guy. But San Francisco's not going to deal with Dallas. Now, they did send Charles Haley there. They did send Charles Haley to Dallas. You know, Dion did go to Dallas. Now, he was a free agent. Okay, trade Jalen Hurts. Nah, quarterback positions too more too valuable. There's not a defensive player in the dra- there's not a defensive player in the league that I'm trading for a quarterback. That's a guy who's one of the front line guys. Not a guy. Like here, I mean, you'd have a tough time for me getting rid of Justin Fields for a defensive player. He'd have to be Nick Bosa. No, it's not going to trade a guy. Well, here's my defensive end. I drafted him in the third round. He's a really good player. We'd like to have your quarterback. That's not going to happen. Jerry's desperate. Man, Dan Quinn. But the 49ers are not going to deal with the Cowboys, especially when the 49ers believe they're this close. Why would you put why would you push Dallas closer to Philly with that move? If you're San Francisco, you're trying to you're trying to get closer. Personally, do they sign him? See, th- what, what what kills me and what John Lynch and the Yorks know, they have to know that you're not paying a quarterback. You can pay this guy. You should pay him the 30. If that's me, I pay Nick Bose the 30 million. My quarterbacks are making no money. I have a guy who went to the NFC title game last year that made $937,000. Why would I pay? I, I, I can afford it right now. I'll tell you what, that defense, man, has a lot of money on it. $20 million in a D-tackle position, another twenty at Fred Warner. Now you're going to pay thirty at end? Wow, that's a lot of money, man, on that side of the ball. The biggest contract the Eagles ever gave to a defensive end was Trent Cole, four years, 48.5. But he only saw twenty-one million of it. Brandon Graham technically earned the most money on a contract, earning four years twenty-six point seven eight million. And that's back when the salaries obviously were a lot lower than where they are. But if you look at the percentage, and especially those contracts, tone in the time when they signed them, they were well above market value. So true. That Trent Cole deal. Trent Cole hasn't been on the Eagles in what? 15 years, 15 years ago, that's probably a really good deal. 
That's probably a really good deal for a defender, especially an edge guy. Okay. If, if I'm if I'm San Francisco, you 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 I I think you you have to sign him until you figure your quarterback out. Now, is there something you can do? Is there a player out there that can help your quarterback position if you trade Nick Boza? Zippers on wallets in the NFL. Who would be willing to take him on? Would you trade Trevor Lawrence for Nick Boza? Probably not. Would you trade Justin Fields for Nick Boza? If you're Chicago, would you would you entertain Boza for Justin Fields? Defensive player of the year? Guy you're not sure on? They need a quarterback. They need a quarterback. Would you trade him for Mac Jones? No. You're not Allen's off the table. Burrow's off the table. I'm not even gonna talk about the guy in Kansas City. They need a quarterback. And I think they can they need a quarterback to help them win games. Kyler Murray makes sense to me, but I don't believe they would do that in the division. Would you trade Nick Boza to the Saints for Derek Carr in draft picks? You gave me two, you gave me a first and a third and Derek Carr for Boza. Would you do it? Scott goes Dak. Cooper Rush won games. If you're the Cowboys, would you send Dak Prescott to San Francisco for Nick Boza? Knowing full well he's underachieved in Dallas and he's scheduled to make 49.5 million bucks this year. Would you do that if you're Dallas? And then you would have Parsons, the other dude. You'd have to send that end to Marcus Lawrence, right? You'd have to send him and Dak for Boza. Or, yeah. But then I think San Francisco would have to send something back. Because Lawrence and Dak for Boza sounds like Dallas has given too much up. Dallas would have to get a first rounder, or you'd have to give him Kittle. Would you? Whoa, man. Chargers are not giving up. Boza for Russell Wilson. No way. Sean Payton took that job because of Wilson. Would would Sean Payton do that and then go into a rebuild instead of an unknown? If you're Payton, would you rather go into a rebuild and you get Boza in there? <clears throat> Interesting. Chuck goes, if Boza gets hurt, none of this matters. Boza being hurt doesn't matter because it's not what he is. He's not hurt. So you're making – we're talking here, and at least I'm talking about a guy who's not injured. You're talking about a guy maybe he gets hurt. He's not hurt. Niner. Do you do you send Boza for a quarterback? Do you 
Would you want Dak? How about you do this? You send Boza to the – nah, they would never trade with the Rams. That's their, that's their rival. Holy cow, that's a good one. Kyle, would you trade Nick Boza to Detroit for Jared Goff and draft choices? And maybe Aiden Hutchinson. Give me Aiden Hutchinson and golf, and I'll send you Boza in a second and a third. Would you do that? And who, who did they – didn't they draft a quarterback too? The kid from Tennessee, right? All right, I got to take a time out. I'm going to do a little more reading here. I can't believe that, man. He's a, he wants $30 million. And Aaron Donald sets the table because he makes $30 million. Yeah, Hendon Hooker's up there. That's right. The kid, I like that kid from Tennessee. I think he's injured, though. I think he's coming off an injury, though, right? An ACL injury? All right, hit the like button. Keep it here on the National Football Show.